Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. <laughs> Tomorrow is going to be one of the first reptile shows, I think like the first reptile show that we've had since the whole COVID thing. Just browsing through the group, something kind of interesting came up. I'm always trying to think of like interesting topics or whatever. Somebody asked the question, how does everyone feel about not being able to handle the reptiles at the expo? Will you still be picking one up? And we've had like 25 comments underneath here with people all saying negative things about handling animals. Now I have to say with the whole COVID thing going on, it's understandable. I like to go for walks with my snake and I still do that, but I don't let anyone touch my snake and it's because, just think about it, there's a disease going on, someone has it, I let a hundred people touch my snake and next thing you know, a hundred people have COVID or something. I, I do try to be precautious with all that stuff. So now with the show not allowing you to handle the animals, it's understandable because of COVID. But take the whole COVID situation away, go back to the way like the shows were, and lots of people that are even in the comments saying negative things about handling are people that come to the shows and handle animals. I've seen them handling them. I've seen them allow other people handle their animals. So to me, it's just, I have to call them out on that because it's just like I've seen you I've seen you doing it I've seen you let people hold your animals I'm not saying that that's a bad thing but I'm just saying it's just like now we live in a world where everyone has an opinion and everyone jumps on the oh this is what most people think so this is what I'm gonna do you know it's like <laughs> UV becomes popular, somebody never gave their animals UV, then they get a UV light and then they tell everyone, you're terrible if you don't use UV. You understand how kind of like hypocritical that is and like what nonsense that is? I have a hard time with that. I, I really, I have borderline personality disorder, okay? And I just kind of feel things strongly. I have a twisted sense of justice or something, but it's just like, you can't, you can't say something that totally contradicts with what you're doing. And I see this all the time and I, I really don't ever want to be that type of person. I'm totally pro for letting people handle your snakes and letting people have that experience because the if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't be in reptiles right now. I went to my first reptile show hoping to buy a tortoise and I was scared of snakes. I had no idea that the reptile show should be called a snake show because there's just thousands of snakes everywhere and there were people holding them. There was a kid that was handing out snakes to people. He said, do you want to hold one? And I, I'm like, not really, but you know, if this kid can hold one, I can hold one too. So sure, what do I do? Make a bowl. He stuck a snake in my hand. I'm shaking. There's a ball python in my hand not doing anything and I'm scared it's going to attack me like Jaws or something. It was wonderful. And that is what led to me getting my first snake. And I loved my snake so much that it continued, but it all started from that positive experience. We're here, I'm here to give you a positive experience. And I don't go take my animals and do shows and stuff. I, I will rent out my snakes for music videos or that kind of production stuff, but I don't care to go do kids' parties or all that stuff, and almost all the big people do. You know, like, Clint's Reptiles goes and does those experiences for everyone, and everyone loves him, and I, I love him too. You know, Snake Discovery does that, Brian Barchuk, all, all those people do that. Lots of people just don't because they're not able to, because they're not in demand or whatever. For me, I would never do it because I'm just, I don't want to travel to places with a pile of snakes. I don't even really like going to the expos for that reason. I go to the expos because financially, expos are where you sell the most animals. And if you're breeding reptiles, you have to sell them. Otherwise, you're just caring for all these animals and it just ends up taking all your time and money and it, it, you're just a snake hoarder. It's a hobby, but it's also a business. You have to go to the market because that's where you sell your animal. If it wasn't for that, I wouldn't be going there just to give people that experience. But I do believe that that experience is special and important. Anything that you're gonna buy, you do kind of want to hold first. Am I crazy for thinking that? <laughs> 
Like, am I crazy for wanting to pick up the animal? I want to look at its scales. I want to run my finger down its spine and see if there's any kinks in the spine. I want to check its butthole and see if the crap is like stuck there, if it's swollen, if there's any prolapsing, if there's stuck scales. I want to look at its eyes. I want to see if its eyes are clear. I want to see like how it reacts to me. Is it really scared? Is it really tense? Is it really relaxed? Um, what's its personality? Like, right from the beginning, one of the things that I've wanted to do differently, okay, let's say purple is the most popular snake. Lots of people want these purple snakes. And to make these purple snakes, you gotta buy a red snake and a blue snake. So people say, ooh, purple snakes are really valuable. I'm gonna buy a red snake and a blue snake. I'm gonna make purple snakes and I'm gonna make money selling those purple snakes. Or quicker, they'll go buy a couple purple snakes, produce more purple snakes, and they're selling purple snakes and they're happy. I've always thought, I want to make the purple snakes too, but I want to find the most beautiful blue snake, the most beautiful red snake, and now I'm going to make the most beautiful purple snakes. And that's the way I've always thought of it. I want to find the very best. I want to find the ones that I like the most. Sure, other people might be happy with something kind of less, and most people charge way too little, I think, for their animals anyways. But that's a whole other video topic. When I go to the show, I take an animal, I look at it. Now look at, look at this boa. Look at how sweet she's been the whole time. I've been going crazy and getting myself going, making my heart pound, and she's just chilling. She's got a beautiful personality because from the time she was a baby, I've handled her. I've spent time with her. And she's comfortable with me. She feels safe with me. That starts from an early age. Every snake has a different personality. It's like, before you decide to start dating someone, don't you talk to them? Don't you get to know them first? Before you get an animal that's gonna live with you for 30 years, like if you buy it online, you have no choice. You don't get to pick it out. But if you go to the expo and you have the chance to handle it, you look at them, you check all those things. One of my favorite things in, to do that I think everyone should do is grab the snake like this, spread, spread it right here under its mouth. I'll spread its skin. I'll look in here and see if there's mites. I'll check inside its mouth. Look at its mouth. Is its mouth bubbling? Is it looking nice and clean? Look at its eyes. Look at everything. Investigate it. Do you see that? I forced her in place. I held her down. But is she stressed out? Is she freaking out? Is she trying to get away from me or trying to bite me? No. Because we've developed a relationship where she, where she trusts me. She feels safe. And <laughs> I'm ranting, but it's just, yes, there's COVID. We can't look at it. We can't touch anything. And I guess you're gonna to have to buy your animals in containers and then check them out later. But, but just, that's an inconvenience and that's because of COVID. Think of this, so you, you buy a snake from someone in a container, you take it home and then realize something's wrong with it. And then the person that is breeding it lives on the other side of town or somewhere further or they just came in for the show and now they're gone and now there's nothing you can do about that. And the sad thing is that just like in real life, most people <laughs> are not really nice. They're not. Like, most people, if they can rip you off, they will. And lots of the animals that you see for sale on Kijiji are not good people trying to find, you know, good homes. They're just people trying to get rid of their animals, or their animals have an issue and they're trying to get rid of it. And that's not for everyone, but just in general, most people are selfish and greedy and like will screw you over if they can. So this whole thing does allow for a lot more people to get screwed over. And I don't want that to happen to you. And just be careful. Make sure you do really check the animal as much as you can. And I'm not, I'm not buying any more animals now. I'm done with buying animals. Like I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to buy any more animals. I'm just going to be downsizing. Seeing animals at the reptile show, handling them, seeing your friends and handling your friend's snakes and like all that kind of stuff is that hands-on experience is part of why I love going to the reptile show. And I'm so happy to let a child hold a snake for the first time and watch 
their eyes light up and give them that experience. And for everyone that is villainizing that, like, shame on you, <laughs> you know? Shame on you, because it's just, it's absolute nonsense. Lots of us really do love these animals and want to share our passion with everyone. And for everyone that's doing that, good for you. And for everyone that can kind of like, I don't know, stand up for themselves and not like just go with what everyone else does and jump on the bandwagon and hate on people and hate on me. <laughs> like, I know I do some things that are distasteful, but that's okay. Like we all have to, we all have to stand for what we believe in. We can, we can disagree. We can all feel different things about everything. Like that, that's the joy. You know, I like different foods that you might not like and your favorite color might not be the same as mine. And that's okay. We don't all have to see things and feel things the same way. But it was just like, I was going to put a comment down and have like one comment going for like, um, why I think it's awesome that at reptile shows we can handle them and we can you know share them with people and everything but it was just like i knew that if i did that i'd just be attacked so instead i thought you know let's make a video and give even more people the opportunity to tell me why i'm nuts tell me why i'm crazy and share <laughs> share the hatred <laughs> because i can take it i can do those things i'm not a hero set the dogs on me because that's what needs to happen Sometimes truth isn't good enough. So we'll hunt him. Because he can take it. Because he's not our hero. It doesn't bother me if people don't like me. You know, my whole life I've kind of felt like eight out of every ten people don't like me. And that's, I'm a, I'm a strong character, I'm a, I'm a bit different, and I spent most of my life hating myself, and it took a long time to be okay with myself. Okay with having opinions that are different from everyone, and I love you guys that are here, you know, showing me the positive support, even if it is the less popular opinion. It doesn't matter, you don't need a hundred friends, you, you need one or two good ones. And if you, you've you been that for me, then thank you. Like, you guys are the, the reason that I keep doing this. Because, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I love sharing this kind of stuff with you. I love giving you no nonsense. If it stinks, it stinks. If it doesn't stink, it doesn't, you know? I'm not gonna take it and change it into something else. And I'm not gonna just give you what you want. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you the truth. And now I've gone on long enough and I hope you have a great time at the show if you're going tomorrow. And all that, like, good stuff. I just hope everything's good for you. We're all going through hard times, and, like, now are the times that we should kind of be boosting each other up and being more kind of positive towards each other instead of, like... <laughs> I don't know, taking such strong emotional opinions on, on everything. <laughs> and just because you, you know, let's say you're pro-vaccine, let's say you're against it, like, I think that everyone has the right to choose that too, and it's just like if somebody chooses to smoke, smoking is bad for them. You have a friend that smokes, are you not their friend because they smoke? Oh my goodness, I'm not that person's friend because they are smoking. That's their choice, you know? We, I think that we all, we all have choices and we're allowed to make those choices, and no one should hate on anyone for their choices. It should be more open. Everything should be more open. Isn't that where everything's going? But it just feels like with the more freedom that we have, it's like the more opinions everyone has, and now all of a sudden you can't say, do, or feel anything because there's gonna be a hundred people saying, no, you're wrong. <laughs> Anyways, that's my rant. Have a good one. Hope you enjoyed it. You know, if you enjoyed it, just like the video. If you're not ready to subscribe, you don't have to. If you want to, that would be lovely. Thank you to all the new subscribers. Thank you to you guys. And see you tomorrow at the show, maybe. <laughs> and you know what? If you're one of those liars, <laughs> you know it. And I know it, too. We won't have to say anything about it, but... <laughs> Don't lie, lying's bad.